in my mind, I was like, that's great. I want you to. And then out loud, I said, no, they're coming. Oh, you could totally pervert that whole statement. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to go uh, grab a glass of milk here. Okay. And make sure that I'm not burning my fucking pizza to a crisp. <laughs> Extra crispy. Hurry up. Don't get me wrong, I like a good crispy pizza. But <laughs> I'll be back. Alright. We'll stay white here. <laughs> Please remember, the views and opinions expressed by this show or any other show on DV Radio and its guests are strictly those of said individuals and do not reflect those of the DV Radio staff nor the staff of dysfunctional veterans. Let's get it started in here. <laughs> get this party started. This is Barrack's Talk. It's DV Radio. Google broke the toilet. And I think I just broke my desk. <laughs> Tonight, Google is planning on taking over the world. <laughs> you can dip Brussels sprouts in chocolate to make them look like cake pops. $15 is a little steep for a bag of dicks. It should be like $14.99. Sure? I'm pretty easy to please. Not even one touch it as much as I want to. Are you sure? <laughs> and we just went there. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Because this is how it is on TV radio. Oh. Yeah, you listen to the podcast there, young man. Oh. You're tuned in to WDVR on DVRadio.net or by searching DV Radio on the free Live 365 app on your mobile device. Because this is how it is. On DV Radio. That is how it is right here on Barracks Talk Live on WDVRDVRadio.net where you're listening to us in America, Canada, and the UK. I'm Boner Wood. We've got Recoil, Oink, and Frosty. It is August 10th, 2019. DV6, Google, or Marquee isn't with us. And, uh, you know, that's how this rolls because we're dysfunctional vets and we're professional as fuck. Um, how's everyone doing this weekend? Superb. Fantastic. Oh, just fine. Sounds like loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of fun. <laughs> Jeez, that many loads, you would think we were in a different business. <laughs> oh, well, we, I think we need to be. I, I think we need to be. Time to we have, up waiters. Just so everybody knows, we have no updates on the farm or DV6 or Google or Marquee because nobody told us anything until, I don't know, during pre-show. Um, so, we ain't no shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we have no fucking clue what's going on outside of the radio and our personal lives. Don't ask us any questions about anything outside of DV radio <laughs> and our personal lives because we have no fucking clue what's going on anywhere else in DV. Um, I've not talked to DV6 or Google since last Saturday. How about you guys? I think he posted a live video about two days ago on the closed group. But, because uh, I, I didn't get a chance to watch it. I didn't get a chance to watch it all myself personally. I was getting ready to say because I have time to watch live videos. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but um, yeah, we are here. We we are doing a show. Um, so you're going. You got us for. If you don't like it, uh, I suggest you either press the X on your browser or shut off your mobile device now and move on. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> now that we're done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, stick, uh, I'm out. <laughs> stick your mobile device in the microwave. <laughs> I really wanted to say I thought that was your cat, but <laughs> or your baby. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we just must went there. Be liberal. But, I mean, uh... <laughs> I tell <Sorry>. you. 
Oh, Scheiße. Scheiße, Mann, Scheiße. Hoppen da. Okay. So. <laughs> um, you did hear the stream a little late because Live365 called up really slowly tonight. We're not sure why. I think it's just having one of those nights. But we are here. Um, does anybody have anything they want to bring up this last or this first half hour of the show? And we can just get right into it, or do you want to wait until the second half, or how do you guys want to do this? Personally, I don't give a shit, but I can say I don't know how long I have left on this battery. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's what's the company where we got these from, or do you want to even name them? Do they even deserve that? It's a company that. Coins themselves as pro audio and pro video, and laptop, laptops and PCs. For the amount of money that was paid into these laptops, they need to reevaluate what the fuck they are doing. That, or they need to learn the fucking definition of professional audio and video. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> yeah, the pro part. That's kind of yeah. I mean, I, I've had stock laptops last and do way better than this shit has ever done. My fucking HP that I bought at the exchange lasted longer than this thing has. Well, <laughs> granted, granted, Microsoft has fucked up a lot of stuff. Before Microsoft went on their fucking Nazi spree in the last few months, um, it started fucking up not long after we got them. I mean, mine was cracked. My screen's about to fall the fuck off. Uh, FedEx is stupid. Um, we don't even want to go in that fucking direction right now. <laughs> yeah, well, I paid I paid for fucking overnight shipping to your house from my house, and it took like four days to fucking get there. Yeah, and it takes eight hours straight through to get from my house to your house. <laughs> I paid like 130 fucking dollars on motherfuckers. And... Uh. and 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 the bitch, when I tell her that we want our money back, I'm sorry, we can't help you with that. Excuse me? <laughs> Do what? You'll have to call corporate office. Recoil actually did. <laughs> Basically, another fuck you. Sounds like another company I know. Uh, but yeah? Yeah, yeah, you know, the whole refrigerator... Guys just coming in and you know doing what the I, fuck they want, I, I know, not I was, showing up. I know. I, I, I was I was hoping it would it would it would implore you to say their name, but I oh won't. Well. <laughs> well, they're not sponsoring us, so, so you know, fuck them. Right? I know. Uh, I know. <laughs> fuck your orange, orange hardware store. They're an orange store, you know, a big box yeah. store or some shit. So you know, fuck your orange hardware store. <laughs> Bitches. Everybody's gonna be like, they're so nice to me. <laughs> I've never had problems yeah. with them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it wasn't necessarily with them. It yeah. was with the local so-called delivery company that they fucking, you know, the third party that they still haven't, you know, divulged to us who they are, and you know, made anything right with it yet. So, well, but yeah, I, these, these guys were just so unprofessional. It was pathetic. So I've I've got a little bone to pick about franchises. Because that's what that hardware store is. That's what a lot of these hotels are. That's yep. what ninety nine percent of your fast food restaurants are. But let me tell you this: a franchise gets started with a fucking headquarters, and a headquarters is supposed to make sure that those small franchises are doing what the standards are. To not blame both franchise and the headquarters is stupidity on your part. And I bring this up because I posted something not too long ago. I believe Oink knows what I'm talking about. And a couple people were like, oh, they're, they're locally owned and blah, 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 blah. Yeah? So? Uh -huh. what What's your point? Uh, <laughs> do you complain about the VA clinic fucking you over? Yeah. Just because it's locally fucking ran doesn't mean that it doesn't have a higher fucking boss power. So, yeah, go fuck yourselves. Um, <laughs> you have to start Everybody so answers to somebody. Right, you have to start. You have to start somewhere when you send in a complaint. 
And just like in the military, you don't go straight to the captain because, you know, your vaginas fill the sand. You go up your fucking chain of command. You go to your section, section sergeant, then your platoon sergeant or whatever it is, and then first sergeant and shit like that. That's how it fucking works, all right? Just like in the military. With the fucking civilian world, you go to the manager of the franchise, then you go above that, then you go above, uh, eventually until you add up, get up to the fucking headquarters, all right? So if you know what post I'm talking about, those little motherfuckers saying, oh, he feels entitled. And but no, he's not entitled. He didn't ask for anything but half an hour extra to feed his son. Because his son yep. can literally do nothing for himself. Yep. And that's, I think, the reason why a lot of people were asking with the new little disclaimer uh, there in the chat. Uh, they were not aware of it. Of what, oh, yes. we're talking, or what we're talking about. So. Yeah. So that that little... Disclaimer, no inside of violence, self-harm, no blatant racism, no illegal activity, no disrespect outside of clear humor, including adult humor, is in chat room because I'm tired of having to tell people what clear and blatant racism is and telling somebody to go off themselves is not a cool thing to do. Yes, we all make jokes. We do it here on the show, and we don't have a problem with 99.9999% of the fucking jokes. We don't. We don't. Um, if you're going to argue, make it civil. We argue all the time. Then right after that, we shake hands. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> and, and, and we go on about our days. But what I seen the other day was straight up, A, disrespectful, whether it was meant to be or not, and B, just morally, in a person's fucking mind, to call a father, or, or go after a father who's trying to take care of his son, and, and do it in a, what kind of way, Oink? How am I trying to put this so I don't sound it, like I'm pissing well, I mean, it, Yeah, I mean, it was, I guess we have to give some context a little bit. I mean, it was a, a father that was trying to take care of his son. His son is, uh, what you, uh, was he paraplegic or what? what? He, has, he has a few things wrong with him. Um, he has a few things going on, and it, basically this, Certain franchise, locally owned place, kicked him out. Wouldn't even give him thirty minutes to let him feed his son, which, by the way, is through a tube. If that you know means yeah. anything to anybody. Yeah, it's a GI but, tube. Um, it goes through his stomach, and you have to literally stand there or sit there and let the food dribble into his intestines. That's how it yes. works. And and basically, the, the manager of this local place did not allow him to give him you know thirty extra minutes to do this. You know, so it was uh, it was really. A sad situation, a effed up situation, you know, and yeah. I don't know, it, it pissed us both off, I think, pretty much when we were both read it, and you know, we both kind of commented on it and, 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 and went straight to the top, which is, you know, hey, whatever. But the thing is, is that, you know, I mean, come on. Here's a father who was abandoned by the, you know, the mother trying to take care of his son for all intents and purposes, and you can't give him an extra 30 fucking minutes to, to take care of him. Yeah, it's, uh all I'm going to say about the place is it was a hotel. Uh, if you know about the post or can find the post, good on you. Um, he made a video. I don't blame him. Any mother or father in their right fucking mind would have been upset. But he kept his fucking cool. You can ask Coink. That man is yeah. one cool ass motherfucker. I'd have fucking beat the <laughs> living shit out of that guy for kicking me that's out of my hotel room that I paid for when I'm feeding my child, even though I'm 10 minutes over fucking, you know, leave time. I think check out. the yeah. I think the fact that nobody was in the fucking parking lot and anybody who had it came up would have been like, okay, let him feed his son. I'm cool with that. I don't think anybody would have minded waiting, you know, half a fucking hour for someone who can't do for themselves to be well, fed. Well, here's you know, here's another little fact. Okay, checkout time. Let's say is at uh, eleven o'clock. Well, check in time until fucking four. Usually. Usually. Three or four, yeah, usually. Yeah. So you, you have a, a few hours, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Go clean another room, lady. You know, yeah. for crying exactly. out loud. <laughs> exactly. So and for him to keep his cool, like I said, I probably would have ended up in jail. Yeah, I know. I would have <laughs> I would have fucking probably ended up under the jail after getting through that piece of shit. But that's neither here or there. My point is, don't be a dick just because you feel the right to be a dick. All right? If it's joking, and we can clearly state that it's a joke, fine. You know when I'm joking, I know when you're joking, it's all good. But if you're doing it 
because of entitlement or whatever the fuck you think they're doing, you're a piece of shit. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> yeah, or to, or to track them down on their personal Facebook page and, and to, to yeah. call them out on that, too, is, is totally yeah. and absolutely wrong. So that That's another thing. If if we post something to, to one of our pages, I don't care if it's DV, DV Farm, Radio, Vet Humor, in the group, keep shit to that post, all right? Don't go after these people. It's not a fire mission. <laughs> all right? Stop being a retard, for back of a leather term. Um, so, okay. Anyway, let's get off the depressing subject. All right, all right, all right. All right. Get a no, cup, keep get it going a cup, for another get... 45 minutes. <laughs> Why, is that how long your battery has left? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have two hours, so. I mean, if you want to fill the gap with something else there, Recoil. Do you want to talk about the sound clip now, or do you want to wait until news? Because I don't think you'll be here during news. I don't think your laptop will last that long, will it? Uh, I think I've used about half of what I had. What did you so have? About three minutes left. <laughs> uh, it's saying I have one hour and forty-four minutes remaining. So we I don't shall always see. I don't always believe that because if you do anything else outside of that, <laughs> right? Um. Don't move your mouse. Right. <laughs> Stop fucking talking. You know, I, I've always wondered shit like that. Does it take into account how much you're using your mouse and typing and stuff like that? Or does it take in consideration only apps at full-fledged uh, power? Yeah, I don't know. I don't have any background apps running. I have the chat room open, and I have whatever the fuck it is we use nowadays, Zoom, and that's it. Huh. I could probably turn my brightness down a little bit. Oh, yeah, you could probably do that. That would probably help a lot. <laughs> yeah, I fucking remember how. Um, press function and then F8. It should work on yours. It doesn't on mine because Microsoft. It's already all the way down. Oh, okay. So it's already in power save mode? Well, either that or I just keep it down because I don't like great fucking lights blasting me in the face. <laughs> I have to squint if it's too dark. I hate that. I would like to get one of those laptop screens that bring the brightness down some, but you don't have to adjust your eyes to read shit. <laughs> Not a blue filter. Fuck blue filters. Those can go suck a dick. Makes everything orange. <laughs> yeah, let's just make everything yellow instead. <laughs> have you tried the um, the uh, the uh, f- uh, filters since Microsoft is updated no, on Windows 10? I tried one of their filters, and it turned to everything orange. It was like a sepia. I was like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I was like, yeah, no. I, like, I tried those gunner glasses, and it was like wearing fucking shooting glasses all day. It drove me fucking nuts. I, I can't stand I've tried a few different things, and I can't stand it. It just, it's uncomfortable, for one. And two, you have to do something to make up for that loss of... Uh, color or or light or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like darkening the brightness, I usually have to squint or get right up close to the screen. Or <laughs> I'm like a little old lady driving her car, can't see over a steering wheel. Oh me. Okay. So um, if you want recoil, we can play your sound clip and then. You can tell us what it's about, and we can all talk about it since we've got about 10 minutes. Well, it's kind of self-explanatory, but go for it. Okay. And the other thing we should do is we should challenge these students. We should challenge students in these schools. They have advanced placement programs in these schools. We have this notion that somehow if you're poor, you cannot do it. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids, wealthy kids, black kids, Asian kids. No, I really mean it, but think how we think about it. Way to go, Uncle Joe. And that is your Democratic frontrunner. Right? So what he's basically saying is if you're white, you can't be poor. Damn. I wish I'd known that all these years. No but, shit. That FedEx guy fucking forgot to deliver my damn white privilege package. Right? <laughs> Son of a bitch. But, but from my understanding, he misspoke, so it's okay. Oh. Well, okay. So Freudian slip and misspoke. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. 
It's okay. Oh, it's okay. It's okay for creepy Uncle Joe to miss Spike. <laughs> creepy bastard. Fucking <laughs> piece of shit. That's what he is. He's a piece of shit. And did you know he also claims there are three genders? I'm still trying to figure out what the third fucking gender is. <laughs> That's what I want to know, too. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. I, I thought that was like a joke thing that you were telling us during the pre-show. This is, this no, no. Real. No, it's actually out there on the news. If you look it up, you know, he uh, was there in uh, Snafu's neck of the woods there in Iowa and uh, made a comment to a local, uh, I guess, uh, uh, college student. She asked him, you know, uh, how many... Genders are there? He replied back, "There are at least three, <laughs> at least, at least at three." Least. <laughs> um, but after, yeah, so it was, you know, after she asked him to explain, you know, what they are, he got a little po'd and said, "Don't play games with me, kid." I mean, you see it all in the video. And then uh, moments later, he grabbed her arm and actually pulled her toward him to emphasize, you know, to basically say, "By the way." I was the first one to come out for marriage or gay marriage or whatever the fuck he was talking about was me. And, <laughs> you know, just a real dick. So, he's batting a thousand right now, people. <laughs> wow. I See, there's even... penis, there's no penis, and there's tiny penis, I guess. <laughs> My, that, that's considered micro, right? <laughs> Ride I the think, wave. The I, micro I have, wave. I, I, have, I have thumb penis. <laughs> Short male, penis. female, and neutral. <laughs> male, female, and neutral. <laughs> well, granted, there is a hermaphrodite, but it's very rare that there that that even happens. I think yeah, there's only the been more a handful common of than you cases. think. <laughs> well, there's only been a handful of cases reported, is what I was getting at. Well, wasn't so. fucking oh fuck? What was that fucking tall redheaded bitch's name? Yep, I know who you're talking about. Yep, I, yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I see your face. Was, she, she's one. Yeah, movie I, star. Yeah, I. Shit, she was just on the TV the other day. <laughs> anyway, um, but it's it's rarely reported, just like autism uh, cases and stuff like that. Up until recently, you Jamie know, Lee Curtis. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, oh, she just came to me. That stupid bitch, too. <laughs> you know, I have respect for her movies. That's about as far as my respect goes for her anymore. <laughs> She's like, I'd let you lick me, but my dick would get in the way. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're me and you have thumb penis, that's not a problem. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's short, fat, and tuna can girth, that's all she wants. There you go. And that will forever stick in your ears for the rest of your night, guys. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Interesting fact from DV Amazon. The smallest functioning male penis is one and a half inches long. Fuck I how really, she know. I was getting ready to say, I don't, I don't want to know the story on how she knows this. But uh, <laughs> I, I have a feeling we're going to find out very quickly after she hears this part in the next ten seconds. Um <laughs> She's got a camera in my bathroom, too. God damn it. <laughs> you know what's funny? She's no, that's just a dicky, dude. That's one and a half inches past your gut. That's <laughs> a dicky. <laughs> a dicky. You guys remember Dickies? The actual apparel company Dickies? The work- yeah. Dickies workwear. Nope. That's it, workwear. <laughs> is that even a thing anymore? Sure yep. is. Because I use them. Well, I don't you know, go clothes shopping anymore. I don't need them. I just need bed sheets. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Holy hell. Uh, later on in the show, we will have an update about the room. Some of the patron members have already, or Patreon, I should say, um, have already gotten a little bit of an update. But uh, I'll update the listeners a little bit here in a little bit after uh, the break, probably. So there's that going on. Um... We're working uh, on getting some shows. That's that's still in the works. All right. Okay. Yep. That's working. Um, guests are in the works. We promise. 
but schedule wants to be a host till it's time to do show stuff right <laughs> that's another thing um if you want to be a co-host or do a show or segment or be a advert voiceover or whatever here on DB Radio and you're a veteran or emergency responder, send us an email. Info at dbradio.net or oink at dbradio.net, I should say. Oink at dbradio.net first, please. <laughs> oink at dbradio.net. Oink at dbradio.net. Oink at dbradio.net. Um, let us let us know a little bit about your background uh, as far as military or um, your emergency respondent services. Um, let us know what you're interested in doing, whether it's uh, co-hosting, hosting your own show, a segment, or doing our adverts. And if you can give us a three-minute pitch of your show or segment, um, an MP3 file, that would be fucking awesome. So we can go ahead and listen to it. If you have the uh, setup, um, we can't give you equipment right now because we're still trying to get our own fucking equipment. Because that's how we roll. Uh, but don't go out and spend thousands of fucking dollars on anything. If this is something you really want to do, trust us. Don't do it. Just buy the cheap shit right now. Okay, we'll make you sound good. Um, <laughs> and uh, we can go from there. Do realize that it's, it's, a, it's a volunteer job. It's not a paid job. But we do ask of consistency. That means, you know... You don't do something one week and then wait six months and do something else. Uh, we understand that life gets in the way, but at the same time, if you wait six months and we don't have something in the works, uh, then we're going to be like, eh, we're just going to cancel it. Because I had that happen with two shows. They up and left me, um, used TV radio as a way to get their job, and they basically told me to fuck off. That's that's what happened. Um, <laughs> so um, don't do that. Because when you need me, I won't be there. Just remember that. <laughs> but please, seriously, um, if you want to be a co-host, a host, uh, do a segment, or do our adverts on here. Uh, we do have Bender and DV Fox uh, that are doing our ads, as well as myself, Joaquin, and these other dipshits here in uh, the Zoom meeting that you listen to on dvradio.net. WDBR. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to pitch a show if it's a half hour show or a two hour show we just want three minutes of uh, what that would be like if it's a segment no more than a minute and a half um, I don't care how long your segment actually is going to be no more than a minute and a half so there you go you okay yeah get her done get her done <laughs> What's he from? North Dakota or some shit? West Camp? Uh, Nebraska. Dakota? Nebraska. Nebraska. I, I thought it started with the N, but I couldn't remember which one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, watch it yeah. do something else. Sure enough, it was. Yeah. Nebraska, he's a big Cornhusker fan, and he actually does not talk like that, believe it or not. Either, so no. He's up there in North, North Nebraska. Dude, I was sitting yes, here sir. listening to uh, some show one day, and they had him come on, and they were interviewing him. And it was one of those in-your-house interviews where they come to your house and they interview you. It's just nonchalant interview. And I, I wasn't paying attention to what was on TV, you know. And I hear this guy talking and all this, that, and the other. And he goes, so what about the get or done statement? And I looked up, and there's Larry the fucking cable guy. But it's not Larry the fucking cable guy. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, because he's a redneck from Nebraska or whatever. Anyway. <laughs> we need to go to break. We need to pay some bills, even though I don't pizza, have one. Pizza. You know what? I, I would love some pizza, but I can't, because can't chew it. Thank you, Crones. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> pizza or piece of? All right, got to drink some pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I would, pizza no, drink. no, no, not happening. Oh, my God. Fuck that. We'll go to break. We'll come back on the other side of the break. We'll figure out what the fuck to do since everybody basically told us, fuck Barrick's Talk tonight. <laughs> You're listening to Barrick's Talk on dvradio.net on Podbean, Stitcher, iTunes, wherever the fuck it's at if you're not listening to us live. We'll be back right after this. DVRadio. 
on the next episode of Media Litter Sandwich. Oh, <laughs> hail this glass of water. Water brings a life. <laughs> so the Comic-Con... <laughs> The Comic Con you're going to, that's a cult. Again, not a sponsor. <laughs> that's a cult. No, the hotel's not a cult. No, the Comic Con itself is a group of people getting together with the same thing. Yeah, and cult. I can see how that could offend people. Yeah. Butt hooters, how many times have you found things make your butt hurt because you're easily offended? Now, at last, Somebody has done something about this condition. But Herder's friend is on the market. A scientifically blended preparation manufactured especially for crappie bees butts. When used daily, helps prevent bleeding, leakage, burning, promotes healing, and in general keeps your butt in tip-top condition for hurting when it's needed. Radio. <laughs> You're listening to Barrett's Talk on DVRadio.net. We're back to DV Radio with more shenanigans, fuckery, and those assholes from DV Radio. Fuck those assholes. Anyway, we're back to Barrett's Talk here on DVRadio.net. I'm Boner Wood. We've got Oink, Frosty, and Recoil, DV6, Google, and Marquis are not here. You can go bitch at them. I don't care. Go go get mad at them. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it right now. Do it. So, how was everyone's week? Okay. Just another week, brother. Just another week. <laughs> I was about to say, okay. I'm bored. <laughs> right. Right on, yeah. man. <laughs> it's been, well, I know for myself, it's been kind of a shitty week and a half, two weeks, you know? Like I said, I'm a firm believer in things that come in threes, and of course, we we lost, you know, Nevermore's father what, a week and a half ago now, and yeah. you know, we we've shortly after that we lost a coworker that Frosty and I work with, and then right after that, you know, we lost uh, my wife's grandfather, which is why I went to Pennsylvania and down there to North Carolina in the first place, and kind of a shock to us because he was actually when we were down there, which was good, you know, thank thank God, you know, or whatever you believe in. That uh, when we were down there, he was actually up and walking and talking and off the oxygen machine and, and was doing well. And then all of a sudden, you know, it, like I said, just a, kind of a trifecta, you know. So, and then of course, roller coaster wise, that was the week and a half. But on Monday, uh, this past week, it was my my little guy's birthday, so we celebrated that. But also my oldest son, which is down there in the lower forty eight, he went to a little Cubbies game. And proposed to his girlfriend. So they got engaged. Of course, she said yes. And the Cubbies won. So there, there's three there that was, you know, <laughs> positive. So, you know, three negatives, three positives. Uh, so it's been a kind of a roller coaster week. But other than that, work wise, it's, yeah, hey, whatever. <laughs> you know, typical <laughs> mid 70s, nice and warm here in Alaska. Sweating your mm-hmm, off. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And mine kind of getting that. News about our coworker, and then, like he said, for us, sweating our balls off, or yeah, out there on the flight, out there at work, and a lot of fun. But uh, I, in fact, right now I'm wearing a red shirt, and my face isn't much different in color out in the sun all day. Crickets. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm really not letting you guys have your own show. <laughs> hey, we almost did it. <laughs> yeah, it's all good, though. But, I mean, it, uh, our, our, our co-worker, he's a fellow Marine or was Marine, you know, and he, I'll tell you what, he could tell some stories, that's for damn sure. <laughs> Is what, Mike was one of those guys that uh, had no filter, you know, was old enough to, to earn that right, first of all, that had no filter, would tell you like it is, and probably was a great fit for dysfunctional <laughs> veterans radio, let me tell you. <laughs> you would have fit in here great. <laughs> so, you know, simplify to that Marine. Obviously, we're thinking about him. Um, his family has chosen to obviously keep his funeral to them, which is fine. Um, they are going to have a little memory for him. At uh, He was obviously an advocate for uh, the American <laughs> Legion um, and what he did there for the, the post that he was at. So we're going to – we'll see about attending that and, you know – 
pay our respects, of course. Cool. Cool. I do hope you guys get to go to that. Um, so, you, you sound like you had an interesting week there, Frosty. It was so interesting that my piss was longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I mean, all you're doing is playing out in the sun all day. It, not much to do. <laughs> uh, Rico, uh, you want to talk about your week or just say go to last week's Recoil's week? <laughs> Mouthful of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Mouthful she said. Mouthful of lava. <laughs> <laughs> Mouthful of piece of. <laughs> right. Oh, there's the other. There's the other sex pizza. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't have a horrible week. Um, it wasn't too shabby. Got a good bit of work done. Um, the field crews were are all kicking ass. The shop guys are doing well. The young bucks are learning. The old guys are teaching, and away we go. Also, things are turning around a little bit. By old guys, I mean me. (laughs) So shit's still going the same way. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, shit. Oh, me. Well, I guess that means it's my turn. (laughs) Um, So today's Saturday, Friday, Thursday. Thursday, the contractor came by. Um, They basically finished up. Um... They widened the uh, front door and replaced it because you have to do that, as I explained on Patreon. Um, and they widen, widened the door that leads from the living room through the to the breezeway going into my room. Um, Friday, the VA inspector came out, and that was the final inspection. And as of yesterday at around 3 o'clock, 3 o'clock or so yesterday. It was somewhere around that time, yeah. Um we can basically move in to the room at any time. That being said, JJ and Nevermore have 99% of my stuff. So can't, can't, can't move in yet. Um, uh, the couch is in there, but I, I really don't want to sit in there with nothing else to do. <laughs> I can, but if, if I can do more stuff, I, I will. Um, I could be doing my, my models and all, but again, I need other stuff in there. And the way things are looking right now, my whole plan is shot to fuck. But they I had things planned. But anyway, um, I am able to move in pretty much any time. Uh, then the guy that um, the only other quote unquote inspection that's going to be uh, after that is the guy that uh, basically signs off to pay the contractor uh, the rest of what he is owed. But unless I say something's wrong, more than likely uh, he can't really do nothing, especially once I have some shit in there. So. Just so you all know, Bo, Bo, Bo can move into his room anytime, uh, whenever Nevermore and JJ decide to bring my stuff. Nevermore and JJ. Nevermore and JJ. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're not listening tonight because they got so much going on. And uh, was, But their pages will be blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, speaking of uh, Nevermore, we still have the GoFundMe going for uh, her dad, Charles. Uh, so, if you haven't got to see that... Um, I think Frosty might have it, or Oink might have it on hand. They'll drop it in the chat room. Um, sorry, I've got like five things blowing up. Uh, no, you're it, fine. It's uh, what a lot of people fail to understand when a a vet or 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 anyone who's prior military has passed away. When you hear buried with full military honors, in our heads, we think that it's all covered. It's all paid for. Nothing to worry about. That is so far from the truth, it's not even funny. Um, Whether you die in combat or in service or out of service, the VA only pays a very small fraction of the funeral. Um, If it's uh, in a national cemetery, they pay a little bit more. If it's outside of that, they pay a little bit less. But at the end of the day, you have to do the whole game system thing. You have to send in a request for reimbursement to the VA, and the VA decides whether or not you are going to be reimbursed, and then they decide how much you get back until they pay you off. And then, on top of that, uh, if you have life insurance, make sure that it covers other stuff, not just one thing. Um, That's all I want to say about that, but that's why we're running the GoFundMe, on top of the fact that Nevermore has done a shit ton 
for you guys and for us. And the best way we could pay her back was to do that for her, her and her mom. And I think Oinks talked to her mom as well as myself, right? Yeah, I actually got to, to speak with her, uh, speak with Pat, and, you know, um, sent her some flowers, and she was just ecstatic just for the simple gesture of flowers, you know. So yeah, every little bit, whether it's a share, whether it's whatever you can do for the GoFundMe below, I mean, it's 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 not much, but even a share is a lot, believe it or not. So, yeah. um, you know, she, she was touched by the flowers. She was, you know, ecstatic, uh, obviously. Uh, Nevermore was as well, so um, every little bit helps. And I, I just want to let you guys know how much you touched her mom. Her mom had it in her head uh, for various reasons that it was for Nevermore only, and I had to call and talk to her. And she broke down on the phone when I explained to her why we do this, because we're all family. That's what we do. Whether you're, you know, new generation or World War II or veteran or whatever veteran you are, we're all family to some extent or another, blood or not. And she lost it because all she could say was nobody has ever done anything like this for me. And that wasn't towards me. That was you guys. All you guys who have donated or shared it. It's because of you. And I can't thank you enough. I know Nevermore and Pat can't thank you enough. So, just so you know, you impacted the shit out of Nevermore and her mom, Pat. Um, so, that's how impactful something small like that is. You may not think you've done enough at $5 or, or a share, but it adds up. It adds up really quickly. So, thank you guys from all of us here at DV Radio, Nevermore, and JJ and her mom. Thank you guys so much for what you've done so far. And like Wayne said, if you can share it, please share it. You need to greatly appreciate it. <clears throat> My throat is like really fucking phlegmy tonight. You guys ever get that? <laughs> like First thing in the morning, usually for me. Yeah. Really uh, bad. I think it's where the weather here, especially this week, it's been, you know how you open the oven door and it's straight fucking dry heat hitting you in the fucking face at fucking <laughs> full blast? That's what this entire fucking week has been like. And it's been so dry. And then it'll want to rain or thunder, and it's like, I'm going to go back hot. <laughs> like, fuck you. <laughs> Some days I'd rather be in the Amazon rainforest. And don't take that the way it sounded just now. <laughs> <laughs> you dirty ass minded motherfuckers. Oh <laughs> my god. You heard in the break that Media Litter Sandwich is brand new this coming Tuesday. And he has Donathan from Whatever Talk Podcast. Uh, to talk about woke vocabulary words. What ends up happening is a whatever talk hangout about cults, offended people, and anarchy, libertarian, socialism titles that make no sense. That is a fucking mouthful and a half. Media Litter Sandwich airs this coming Tuesday at 1907 p.m. You get to hear it all right here on dvradio.net before it is anywhere else. Unless you've changed that, Toten. Have you changed that, Toten? I know you're in there listening. Has that changed? Um, so, yeah, go listen to that. This Tuesday, I have the description for the upcoming um, uh, Security Sucks podcast as well, which airs Monday at 1700, 5 p.m. All these are Eastern times, if you did not know that. Uh, Joel interviews Gemma, a U.S. Army vet. She has complete. She has completed a tour in Iraq. Uh, she's a member of the AUSA in Germany. She's a podcast host, a mother, and a wife of a metal drummer she wears many hats and opens up her uh opens up about her time in iraq and her current present life again that security sucks podcast this monday 1700 5 p.m eastern uh all of our shows here are completely uh uncensored i mean completely uncensored and what does that mean go listen to honorable discharges adam ray podcast that just got put out <laughs> thursday you want to hear some shit talk? You want to hear all that adult humor? Go over there and listen to it. I implore you to listen to it. Listen to all the Honorable Discharge and other podcasts over on Podbean, iTunes, all that. But um, you won't hear any censorship here 
uh, as far as, you know, language and, and what we discuss. Yeah, we do censor things, uh, various reasons, uh, names or, or um, things that we're talking about in the pre-show, and that's for confidentiality or NDA or whatever. But outside of that, we really don't censor anything. <laughs> like, um, I know I've had a few people get upset about the uh, uh, nothing to watch uh, sweeper that I've made where um, I bleep out uh, uh, fuck. The reason I've done that is because I've had some websites and some other places that have wanted to run our stuff on their websites. And they have to keep it family friendly on their websites. So instead of me having 68 different fucking ones, I've just made one you know, template and use that and rendered it as the main file. So that's why if you hear an ad we have or, or a sweeper or whatever and something's bleeped out, that's why it's bleeped out. It's for use on other websites that um, m some of their audience members may not like fuck. Uh, they may listen to our shows, but they may not like hearing fuck or shit or ass or damn or cunt or pussy or whatever. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, penis or moist. <laughs> right, right, right. So uh, that's why we have some quote unquote censorship. It's just so we can uh, have it publicated, stuff like that. Um, they may have that third organ we can't identify. You know what? <laughs> That might be the reason they don't want to hear those bad, bad words. What do you guys think about bad words? Do you think there's any such thing as bad words? Honestly. Honestly, no. I mean, I think what, most of them are all acronyms for something anyway. Well, well, not even fucking shit and stuff like that, but actual normal everyday terms that are deemed wrong or inappropriate or, or not in good taste, do you think anything is actually a quote-unquote bad word? No, I think there's bad people and bad intentions. That's what I think. Well, it's just like the term hate speech, as DB6 has brought up. What is hate speech? That's my first question. What is hate speech? I mean, I hate the color blue. That's, that's hate speech right there. <laughs> Going by the <laughs> definition, that's fucking hate speech. Um, but when we say that we have curse words or inappropriate words, what is so inappropriate or cursy about it? I mean, really. It's, it's just like having the perfect body. What is the perfect body? Well, society can tell you. And I think society has made up what a bad, inappropriate word is. I don't think there is no true bad word, in all honesty. I mean, I've heard kids cuss. I'm not saying it's right and wrong, but it makes sense for what they're talking about at the same time. Does, you, you, you get what I'm saying? Okay. I think it's cute when little kids <laughs> cuss up a, I mean, th th not cuss up a storm. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. I'm not saying fly off the handle. But when right. they let a little cuss word slip, that's yeah. the cutest fucking thing there is. <laughs> right? I, lo or, I love it when a kid says, God damn it, where's my dinner, mommy, you fucking bitch? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've seen little kids, you know, go... They don't know what the word is, and they're like, shit, or asshole. Yep. It's like, that is the cutest, adorablest thing I've ever seen. And you try to hide your face, because you don't want to see you laughing or smiling. So. But, yeah, I really don't believe there's an actual, quote-unquote, bad or inappropriate term or word or anything out there. That's just me. That's my opinion. Let us know what you think in the comments of the podcast below. Um, <laughs> it's all about context. Yeah, that that too. It's... Anything can be labeled as bad. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, you you can say something really vile without actually using any so-called curse words. Exactly. That's, that's what I'm saying. I mean, recoil. Your bread is just stupid, man. Like, I mean, I know that's a horrible, <laughs> a horrible, horrible example. But anything can be wrong. Anything. And speaking of this, Microsoft i.e. Xbox, I don't know if you guys have seen this, has community standards now, or they've had community standards for a while, but um, they actually made this community standards thing where they give you examples on what you can and cannot say in team chat or voice chat when you're talking. Can you believe that? So are and they monitoring it? I don't know. They're giving you examples. I'm actually on Xbox.com right now 
uh, trying to find this to make sure that I don't get this wrong. But some of the stuff that they use, uh, the the um, examples they use, are quite hilarious to me. Uh, they deem you what you what you should say, or this sounds better than this, and and stuff like that. And I'm just <laughs> like, that's that's trash talk. Oh, right here it is. Um, under their know the difference between trash talk and harassment. Acceptable trash talk includes, and I'll just read a couple of these. Get destroyed. Can't believe you thought you were on my level. There was some serious potato aim. Get wrecked. That sucked. Get good and then come back when you KD's over one. Whatever the fuck that is. Fucking kids and your acronyms. Um, going too far looks like this. Get sexual threat. Can't believe you thought you were on my level. <laughs> <laughs> wait wait it gets better only reason you went positive was you spent all game camping KYS kid I don't like that but I think you know the difference between a joke and actually going and doing something right I mean it's a game right you'd hope so yeah right cheap win totally expected from a blank and that in, in blank it's a racial slur I'm like, really? You have to write this stuff out as to what's acceptable and what's not? Like, really? I mean, granted, I don't like the KYS term, but on the same token, if you can't distinguish a joke or a in-the-moment saying from an actual, you know, go do something, why are you in public chat to begin with? And Am aren't I? most of these games that we're talking about anyway, 17 and above? Right? <laughs> so, just saying. Even if Call of ten, Duty is. If your old son is playing these games, you know. <laughs> right, even Call of Duty is what uh, I think acceptable is teenagers, but they have teenage chat rooms that you can voice chat in, right? Or am I, I wrong? You know, it's been a minute since I played that, so I, well, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I've not played Call of Duty in so fucking long, I wouldn't even know what the fuck to do, so... I, I remember back when it was cool. Actually cool. <laughs> you know, it was an old episode. <laughs> but what do you guys think about those community standards of Xbox? Like, is it becoming that retarded that we have to write this stuff out, or... I think it's more of a CYOA thing. You know, cover their own ass. If they didn't say it, then their lawyers would make them say it eventually because, you know, some kid's going to off themselves, leave a note, and say it was Xbox fault. Well, and that's the thing. A lot, of, a lot of parents just turn their kids loose on the old electronic babysitter. And then they're on, on, they're on there with adult gamers who have adult conversations. You know, that they should be checking themselves, too, if they know that they're playing with young people. But what can well, you do? I, I, I am all on recoils thing right here. I have heard some of these people talk and they sound like 12 year olds. They're actually like 40, 50 years old. I mean, me oink's wife. So, um, <laughs> I love her to death. But, um, and, and then on the same token, you have some of these kids who sound like they're in their 80s and they're actually 10 or 12. And you can't really distinguish that anymore. I mean, I might be wrong, but it's like seeing someone's picture and trying to guess their age. Nine times out of ten, you're probably going to be wrong in today's society. I mean, I'm not an idiot, but at the same time, I've been fooled by ages in all fucking ways. Look at Keanu Reeves. Dude's 55 fucking years old, running around like he's fucking 20. I mean, <laughs> motherfucker never ages. But I think a lot of it starts with parental quote-unquote guidance. Right or wrong? Oh, most definitely. I mean, yeah, my son will sit here and play, you know, crazy, crazy games like GTA Five, but I'm over here watching him play too. But <laughs> He's you also allowed hookers in the car. Uh, you also, also don't <laughs> let you also don't let him get on on in game chat either, right? No, no, it's strictly I, I tell him straight up no online whatsoever. Right. You know, you got to so, keep reminding him now. Mommy said no hookers. 
<laughs> and and you know, right. go, going into this, going into this, I want everybody to remember, we all have played video games that do something here at DB Radio, some point in our lives, whether it was in our past, present, whatever. We all have played video games, and a few of us still do. Uh, talking to you, Oink, you've got kids, you've got older kids, you've got young kids. Do they know the difference between a video game and reality? Of course. I mean, having guns in the house, you know, I am a gun owner, obviously. You know, my oldest son, he's been playing the, the Call of Duties, the Battlefields, all that stuff for years now. I mean, granted, he's 20, but these games came out long before that, you know, and it, anytime we take a weapon out, he knows it's it's real. You know, right. there's a difference between reality and playing games. They're, they know the, the distinction is, is clearly drawn. I mean, it should be for everybody, but apparently today's society is thinking that these games are what's causing these non-sensitization or whatever you want to call it towards violence, which, you know, know without that parental parental interaction, of course it's going to, you know? I played Pong for a half an hour and then I went to school and beat everybody with a ping pong paddle. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I I was getting ready to ask you, Rico, you played, what was it, Castlevania or Wolfenstein back in the day? Wolfenstein? Yeah, Return to Castle Wolfenstein was fucking awesome. That was the first first person shooter online game that I played. Yeah, and it's a pretty badass game. If you've never played it, try to find it's the original. Still, it's still great to this day. Yeah, it really is. It really holds up. It's like Doom. It holds up no matter what year you're in. Um, talking about that error recoil, how do you think people are 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 tr- are winning the battle, per se, as saying it's video games' fault or it's entertainment fault, in general, entertainment fault? Because, I mean, at one point, you know, Marilyn Manson and Eminem were to blame. Elvis Presley was to blame. Then, you oh, know... So, so was Ozzy Osbourne and Alice right, Cooper. Or... Right. Well, then, you know, Quentin Tarantino was to blame. We we, we blame it all on, on entertainment. How are they getting away with it? How are they saying, yeah, it's entertainment's fault instead of, you know, being individually held responsible? Well, I don't think they are getting away with it, but, you know, I think... I think it's a lot easier um, because people are just des- desensitized to a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think it might be easier for somebody that does have mental health issues um, to take things to the extreme because they've seen it, and whether whether in reality or in virtual reality. Right. But, now, but I, let's... I, I, I think there is some truth to that. Well, let's say that video games and violent movies and horror films weren't a thing but we still had media the way we did. Could we blame the media for desensitizing the public? Sure. Yeah. Why do we not do this? Because, I mean, when you turn on the TV, nine times out of ten, you're either seeing a mass shooting, someone got massacred, or someone was raped. You very rarely see anything outside of that realm. Why are we not blaming media as well as entertainment? I mean, I don't blame entertainment. I blame the fact that people want to blame entertainment and the mental issues, as Recoil said. But, I think there has to be a fucking line on that same token. Why do we not blame media just as much as we blame entertainment? So the media pretty much is entertainment at this point, but... Well, that's true. I mean, if, <laughs> if they don't get that sale or that, that, that like or... you know. You, how would I say that, you know, the, the negative news draws more media attention or whatever than a positive story does, it seems like, nowadays? Well, you know what I've noticed? Is if you're a video game, movie, or musician, your sponsors will back away from you faster than they will a news organization that talked about the same exact thing or done the exact same thing. Why is that? Is it, is it, a, double, is it a double standard that we're holding with media versus entertainment? Or is it because we want something to blame instead of blaming the cause, the actual cause, whether it's mental or the individual was just a piece of shit? Yeah, I'm, I'm having a real fucking in-depth discussion right now. <laughs> I'm making you guys think. That's right. But, but, I mean, this is the stuff I've been asking myself. I mean, Columbine, 
they blame Leonardo DiCaprio's movie where he falls asleep in class and he he's been bullied through school. So he falls asleep and he has this dream where he comes in and he ma- he shoots the fuck out of these kids who've been bullying him. And they blame that on on the guys at Columbine. Then they turn around and blamed it on Marilyn Manson's music. So that was two different things that had nothing to do with each other. But yet they still blamed it because it was entertainment and they didn't go into these guys' past. Both of those guys had really bad mental issues now that we have looked in their past. They, they had problems. They had problems at home. But we didn't look at that then. And we do the same thing today. It, are we jumping the gun at, at, and blaming something just so we can get what these kids are calling clout nowadays? I don't know. It makes you think about this red, you know, the, the red flag laws that they're talking about, too. You know, if somebody right. claims or makes a claim against you, and now they're going to enter your home or potentially, you know, could enter your home and take away your weapons because something was said, and they're not allowed to do process. Right. And yeah, that sounds like sounds like one more thing that people could use just to fucking disrupt somebody's life. Well, and, you know, the same goes with a lot of the laws they're wanting to make right now pertaining to guns and not just guns, but things in the quote-unquote violent weaponry area. Um, I don't get it. I really don't get it. They they want to keep rights, but they want to take away your rights at the same time. I mean, what the red flag law basically is, is... Point could say, I came up to him, held a gun into his face, told him I was going to shoot him, and walked away. That's what they're basically saying. Without any evidence, they can come into my home, take my guns, we could go to court, but it would be retarded of me too, because they're basically going to say, you lose all rights from here on out, and nowhere in the future can you get them back. Whether Oink has evidence or not, they're going to take those away. That's what a red flag wall basically is in, in layman's terms without having to go into too much detail. I don't, I don't want to sit here for two fucking hours explaining <laughs> that shit. But that, am I right or wrong? Right? Wrong? Everything I've seen is, has been pretty much spot on. I mean, like you said, you know, you could have a new neighbor move in and, you know, it, they could be as friendly as hell. And the next thing you know, you know, you tell them that you, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm conservative. I have, you know, I believe in guns, and they Facebook friends you. They do a little background research, whatever. Okay, long story short, you wake up in the middle of the night because you hear somebody breaking in your door. Well, it's the cops because of the whole red flag law. And now you're, you know, <laughs> shooting first and asking right. questions later. But there's no, there's not hasn't been any due process. It, but but just because somebody made that claim, you know, the, the potential is there for this to happen. Right. So your ex girlfriend's sister who hates your guts because you didn't sleep with her and have the baby, can say, well, he tried to rape me and held a gun to my head, and he needs his guns taken away, and he poses a threat to society. Whether she has evidence or not, your guns just got taken away, even though you've done absolutely nothing. That goes for male and female. Um, that's, that's what the red flag fucking law <laughs> is. That's, that's exactly what it is. As Oink said, no due process. One of your basic human rights. Morally... Legally, figuratively, uh, this is America. <laughs> Gambino, this is America. Anyway, not going on that fucking soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently, we're we're putting people to sleep talking serious issues here that have to that affect all of us, including veterans. Just want to put that out there. So I guess we'll move on to something that's more entertaining. What would you guys like for us to talk about there in the chat or, or listen at home on your mobile devices? <laughs> Please don't don't everybody talk here at once in the chat room. Is it just me or have you guys seen some more uh, more ads about HIV and HIV and gay drugs? I mean, oh, I've, pharmaceuticals. Is it just I've, me? I mean, I've seen it more and more every day. <laughs> well, it's like All a right. couple. Was it a month or so ago that I asked you guys why they had a gay couple as an advertisement for hepatitis that I seen? Was it you guys I asked that to? I mean, I don't care. But do you think as soon as you hear hepatitis, gay people? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, but uh, I mean, apparently I, they did. I don't even think of that with HIV and AIDS. Yeah, we make jokes, but at the same time, I don't morally think that outright. <laughs> 
people with this hepatitis are just as bright and just as talented as straight people. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, some of you to add those seem like there's now a uh, Mozilla Firefox add-on uh, that you can get where they it's called a Facebook box or, or inside Facebook or something like that. Um, where when you go to Facebook, anything that you do outside of Facebook, whether you're in a new tab or new browser, they can't follow you and track where you're at, so they can't target ads at you. <laughs> but, you know, if you talk about that dildo for Sally, they're going to talk about it or, or show you ads for, or, for sexual toys on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I find it funny that you sit there and you have a conversation about something, and then next thing you know, here's the ads for it. And it's like I didn't even look it up yet. What the heck? <laughs> I don't get that. You know, they got rid of fucking cigarette ads. They got rid of fucking beer ads, but yet they can advertise all these fucking drugs that mm -hmm. they don't even know what the fuck they do to you in the long term. Well, I found out that as long as you don't claim certain things. Um, you don't have to have it FDA approved, and you can say it's a holistic or um, uh, natural remedy. As long as you don't clarify it as an FDA approved drug or medicine, you can basically sell anything. You can be a snake oil so you can, seller. You can say cigarettes are a natural remedy for homicidal thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we can start advertising them on TV again. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Do you feel like killing a motherfucker? Have a Marlboro. <laughs> and that's another thing. They're they're targeting flavors of e-cigarettes towards younger and younger kids. Well, yep. did they do the same thing with Tide Pods and make kids fucking eat them? <laughs> right, they've had fucking cotton candy since like day one of the fucking vape thing. Right? <laughs> I mean, if that's the case, I guess that's why I bi or chewed Big League Chew. Not really, but I didn't even know the shit was can uh, what What? What was that flavor that they had in the pink? You guys remember that? Big League Chew? No, I remember Big League Chew was just regular bubblegum flavor, I thought. But then it came it? out with Creep and a couple other ones. Okay. I, I thought, for, for some reason, I thought it had a different taste than normal, quote-unquote, uh, uh, bubblegum. I do remember when they came out with Apple, because I was like, I'm getting the Apple. I'm definitely yep. getting... That was good <laughs> You're shit. only allowed to have adult scents, like hooker tits and stale pussy. <laughs> when they, when I heard that on my local news, I asked my mom. I said, "What is an adult scent? Fart, um, shit, uh, vagina, penis, semen? Like, what? <laughs> what is an adult scent? Like, <laughs> Werther's Original, <laughs> dude. I have Werther's Original right beside me. <laughs> Necco wafer." <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I first seen um, Face Off with Nick Cage and John Travolta, the first thing I thought of, and excuse me, we would joke around with, was the the Nico wafers and and the priest thing. We we would play around and do that. <laughs> oh, this is the flesh of God or Jesus or whoever the fuck it's supposed to be. Anyway, <laughs> I just offended some Christians and Jews and Catholic Catholics. Catholic. Catholic. <laughs> Save it the butthole of little boys. Um. <laughs> I'm going to hell. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, gotta edit that out, I guess. Don't want to offend nobody. <laughs> so if you heard it here live, don't look forward to it in the podcast. <laughs> Speaking of censorship, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I guess we need to stop this adult humor thing. <laughs> I mean, really, what? I'm sorry, we can't leave that in. It's way too fucking funny. <laughs> right? <laughs> Just post two hours of straight... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we have to censor the show. I seriously thought about just putting up a blank fucking file one day that's two hours long. <laughs> this is a test. This is only a test. If this weren't a test, it would be followed by instructions. I actually have a test for the the Live 365 that plays. It's supposed to play once a month. I don't know if anybody's heard it. Um... Oh my god. What is an adult scent to you guys? I mean, seriously speaking, if you were told to come up with an adult scent to sell to adults, what would it be? 
on a serious, serious side, what would it be? Old Spice. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. Brute? Brute 44? I was, was, was going to say, what's Frosty going to say? Brute? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have a clue. <laughs> like like our friends at uh, K Bar Soap Company make whiskey and bad decisions. Yeah, I mean that that's the only stuff like NASCAR garage fuel. I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I would have problems coming up with a quote unquote adult scent because I want to make it fun and enjoyable. Like, sex. sailboat um, fuel fresh, burning <laughs> GPH. <laughs> Burning rubber. Chili Mac Trail. <laughs> Diesel fuel and shit. <laughs> there you go. Diesel fuel and shit. That's a veteran owned scent. Oh my god, that right there. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Porta <Portage> John. <laughs> and semen. <laughs> right. Chow hall eggs and blue water. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Snathew said, but not all Catholics. <laughs> <laughs> Cather- catheter licks. Catheter licks. <laughs> Fuck catheters, man. Holy shit. Fuck catheters. <laughs> Had a few gotta- of them. Just gotta grab that fucker like you're trying to start a chainsaw. <laughs> no, no. I had one girl, uh, nurse, um, take it out, and she was trying to be respectful and she was trying to be gentle. And at the same time, I'm like, just get that motherfucking tube out of my dick. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm sitting here grabbing the fucking thigh of the grill because it hurts, man. I don't care who you are. That hurts. And I'm like... <laughs> and she's sitting there. She's like, I am so sorry, sweetie. <laughs> Meantime, she's choking the tuna can. <laughs> choking the tuna can. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, snafu has got an adult scent. That last one up there. Swamp ass? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Boob sweat. <laughs> Armpit, earwastic, swampastic. <laughs> Holy fuck! Earwax. Who said that? I did. <laughs> mm. Have you ever cleaned your ear out and later on in the day, like you bite your fingernail or something? And for some reason, you still got that smell or taste on your fingertip. <laughs> oh, my God. It's like popping a zit that's right on the inside of your lip and then tasting all that shit. It's like... <laughs> I say half people have, like, funky earwax and the other half don't. I don't know. There's some, there's some t- weird statistic about earwax. Well, it see, mine gets really hard and it falls out. <laughs> And my brother's, his drains a lot. Like, I mean, a whole lot. And like, it hurts li- his, like liquid? Yeah, and it hurts his head. That, that's, like, that really would be bad. ear pus. No, that's not pus. It's, it's ear wax. <laughs> trust me. Um, and it, it really causes him ear problems and ear troubles, and it hurts his head a lot. And I'm just like, how are we so different when it comes to ear wax? It's fucking ear wax, not ear Ew. solidification. Like... <laughs> <laughs> It reminds me of, um, you know, when you take, uh, what is it, cornstarch and water and mix it together? It looks solid, and it's solid if you slap it. But if you push your finger down in it, it's liquid. <laughs> oh like my coconut God. oil. I've never slapped coconut oil unless it was on an ass. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I mean, coconut oil is like a almost looks like Crisco cooking oil, and then you, as soon as you put it on your skin, it like melts immediately. Oh, I'm thinking of corn huskers. Uh, corn huskers. See, we have that shit here at my house. I'm thinking of corn huskers. Right. Yeah. If you don't know what corn husker is, it's a really milky lotion. <laughs> mm, milky lotion. Mm. It does pretty much look like a bottle of jizz. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, it does. It really <laughs> does. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. But it helps crack hands a lot. That's what my mom uses for her hands. <laughs> Just say it. Get it out. It helps lubricate your crack. <laughs> 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 Oh my damn. Oh my damn. So, what was everyone's supper, dinner, whatever the fuck you called that last meal tonight? Uh, I had I, a frozen pizza that I ate during the break. Oh, nice. Before I was rudely interrupted with questions. I was going to ask Frosty <laughs> and Oink, but they haven't ate yet. Have you? No, mine's upstairs somewhere. I think she's making an owl. <laughs> Freezing in that 70 degree weather up there. I know, right? <laughs> what about you, Frosty? Have you ate yet? Oh, you're Not eating yet. leftovers? Could be leftovers. <laughs> what, what is leftovers? I did some uh, chicken, kind of kind of a, my fake chicken parm. Just bake some chicken and throw some spaghetti sauce on there with some cheese. Nothing wrong with that. I do that all the time. Nice. What's uh? What time is it in you guys' part of the world? 6.30? Yes, sir. Holy fuck. Yeah, they're four hours behind. <laughs> they are the last ones of the United States to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to keep an eye open. These fuckers haven't even eaten dinner yet. <laughs> right? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> myself and Oink were doing something one day, or one night. Oh, we were playing a video game. That's all right. And it's like 4 o'clock my time. He's like, well, I guess I better go to sleep. It's midnight. And I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> going to be a long day tomorrow. <laughs> you Shit. motherfucker. Midnight. And here I am setting up. It's fucking 4 o'clock. <sighs> All right. I guess we'll go to break. We'll come back. We've got junk that's in the news. Recoil, are you going to be able to stay with us until the end? or uh, I'm going to give it a shot. All right. You're listening to Barracks Talk right here on WDVR, dvradio.net. DV Radio is a place where veterans can be veterans live on pre-recorded shows and via podcast free of charge for listeners. Although the laughs and music are free for you, it does cost us. Help ensure that veterans' voices are heard uncensored by sponsoring DV Radio. Check out DV Radio LLC at patreon.com slash dvradio or by clicking on the Patreon button at dvradio.net. Find out more about sponsoring an individual program by emailing info at dvradio.net. Help ensure that veterans' voices continue to be heard. You are tuned into DV Radio. <laughs> and they no, call I'm... us dysfunctional. You're too dead to DV Radio, where the shenanigans never end. Now, back to our show. You big dummy. And now, it's time to find out what stupid junk is in the news. That's right, without Google here again this week, I get to fill in for her. But luckily, there's only, what, like four stories, I think, tonight. So we kind of covered one earlier this evening about the, you know, creepy Joe. So. I was going to ask which one of you fuck nuts is going to do the news tonight. <laughs> <laughs> sloppy yeah. Joe, slop, sloppy Joe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll start with the uh, we'll start with Nogs' uh, little satire here. Um, we'll drop that in chat for y'all to look at the picture. But uh, in Tallahassee, Florida, Private Michael White was arrested for punching wildlife while under the influence of cocaine. White appeared to have rolled in around two pounds or a few pounds of cocaine before going on a crime spree. We were they were able to get a hold of Private White, and here's what he had to say: "Quote: I like to fight. I like to do cocaine." It ain't my fault these animals got my damn way. I warned that gator if he ever came near me, I would fight it. So I punched it good, right in its stupid face. I feel good. That gator can't mess with white. I'm a bad man. 
in quote. <laughs> Private, <laughs> Private White is currently in the process of receiving a field grade. Article 15, his commander said, following... His commander said the following about his soldier's misconduct. This kind of shit makes Florida look bad. But seriously, though, White punched a fucking gator. Name a guy who would rather go to war than a guy who, act, who has actually punched a fucking gator. I mean, the cocaine is the thing he is in trouble for most for, excuse me. Sparring with the alligator is crazy, but not punishable by my opinion. <laughs> Private <laughs> White likely wait, to be wait, reduced wait, wait. to the rank of E1 and receive 45 extra duty. <laughs> wait, and of course, this because... is a satire, but the picture that they have, uh, I thought it was funny. So thank you, Nogs, for brightening our evening up with that story. <laughs> yeah. Looks like you rolled in it. <laughs> yeah, just a few pounds. No, no, nothing big. <laughs> so. Oh, shit. Oh, come on. Now it's not loading. Here we go. There we go. Next story comes from our own recoil there. Let there be cock. Meet the all-gay tribute to ACDC. <laughs> The riff is familiar, the guitar is the same, the distinctive two-step shuffle is the one we're used to, but there's something a little different about this version of ACDC's Problem Child. The guitarist is a giant, muscle-packed man with a bald head and a rainbow-striped knee socks. He's wearing a sleeveless black shirt, a bright red tie, and a Scottish kilt so short it barely conceals what lies beneath. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Gacy DC's Los Angeles' premier all-gay tribute to ACDC. Wow. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> what does I this just, world come to? <laughs> I'm, I'm, re- I'm reading some of these songs, and, um... The titles um, are awesome, right? <laughs> <laughs> dirty Dudes Done Dirty Cheap. Dirty Dudes Done Dirty Cheap. That, that's what I said. Oh, okay. I thought you said dirty deeds. <laughs> no, I read it correctly. Of course, and big and big balls. Uh, Pat- that's the name. <laughs> they, <laughs> did you read down there a little bit where it says uh, about um, 30 years ago, they signed to a, a label and they wrote a song called Pat Me on the Ass, I'm Going to Be a Slut? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> oh my god. Dude, if a white guy wrote oh, something Marty. like that, we would be fucking a white straight dude, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> Let me clarify that. Oh my god. Village people, where are you? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Okay, I see what you're talking about now. Pat me on the ass, I'm going to be a slut in this. Summer, you let your hair grow out. Is that pubes or ass hair? I don't know. I'm afraid to ask them. Actually, I'm not going to. I'm not even going to go there. Oh, my God. (laughs) Well, mine looks like a forest, so. (laughs) Wow. I'm a man of man. history of kicking against stereotypes, playing bass in the legendary queer core band. What the hell is a queer core band? Oh, uh, we're so gay. Uh, uh, open bear man. Uh, take you in the air. <laughs> that would be their scream. I think you've listened to a little bit too much of this, Bo. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can think of. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Research. Research. Yep. He's on the Hershey one. Highway to Hell. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no bells. Right, get a whole lot of Randy. (laughs) (laughs) We package you. (laughs) Oh, shit. Well, that's what the band names for that these guys were in. Gay CDC? That is it? (laughs) Yeah. The gay gays? What? The gay gays? Tribute yeah, the gay to gays. The, uh, to the go-go's. go-go's. Yeah, yeah, the gay gays. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> oh Just fuck. when you think you've heard it all. <laughs> <laughs> so check them out when you're in your local area. That's gay CDC. 
Tribute Panda ACDC. I'll check them out so I can avoid the fuck out of their concerts. <laughs> Coming to your favorite bar near you. <laughs> the Blue Oyster Colts. Somebody's <laughs> going to say, <laughs> somebody's, somebody's gonna say we're all fucking homophobic now. Watch. <laughs> all because of this I'm fucking going into the slippery slipper. <laughs> and watch Gase and DC. What about the jacket off? <laughs> the jacket off club. Anyway. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Of course, a big new, uh, new story of today is uh, somebody got Clinton. Uh, FBI launches an investigation, and Attorney Junior Barr announces that a DOJ probe after pedophile Jeffrey Epstein committed suicide by hanging himself in a prison ahead of his sex trafficking trial. Just so you all know, suicide is in italics and is in quotations as well. Just, just want to make that clear. <laughs> That's right. Jeffrey Espinine has hanged himself inside his New York City jail cell. A billionaire pedophile was found in a cardiac arrest shortly before 7 a.m. on Saturday, which is today, at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in Lower Manhattan. He was rushed to a nearby New York downtown hospital where he was pronounced dead. Now, take this into consideration, everybody, while Oink is reading the rest of this. The man's 66 years old, he's pled not guilty, and he doesn't go to trial for another year, yet he decides to kill himself in his prison cell. Just food for thought. 24 right. hours after some of the names of some of his clients was released. Thank you, Rico. Exactly. <laughs> Epstein, who once boasted an array of high-profile friends, including Prince Andrew and President Bill Clinton, was arrested on July 6th, accused of arranging to have sex with dozens of underage girls at his residence in New York City and Florida between 2002 and 2005. He had pled not guilty to those charges. Epstein's suicide comes just two weeks after he was hospitalized, following what may have been the an attempt, initial attempt to make take his own life. At that time, he you know he was placed under you know suicide watch, but it, for whatever reason, this time he wasn't. I guess is what it was saying here later on. But it has not been confirmed whether Epstein attempted suicide or whether he may have been attacked in, while inside his prison cell. The billionaire had been taken off of suicide watch before taking his own life on Saturday morning sparking outrage from Attorney General William Barr, who has now vowed to look into the circumstances surrounding Epstein's death. Well, he'll be in suicide newspapers coming soon. Yep. Just, just the, hold on, of course, the article, there. it just goes on and on. It lists the entire uh, timeline of what they're talking about here. But, uh, yeah, kind of weird. Epstein was also an associate of uh, President Bill Clinton, but, under, but the unsealed court documents revealed that uh, was it the uh, golf recently had denied ever being in, uh, intimate, intimate with him, one of the uh, accusers, that is. So, it, I don't know, there's some definitely uh, some story here that uh, sounds fishy, if you know what I'm saying. At least he didn't have, you know, a double shotgun to the back of the head. <laughs> I, I, <I'm, laughs> I mean, really, you know, we talked about it in the pre-show. Would who in their right mind, and they're going to say he wasn't in his right mind, obviously, but pleads not guilty, has the life that he does, and isn't going to trial for another year, up and kills himself after, as Recoil said, his client's names were released. Well, the bleach bit didn't work, so... Well, I mean, he's <laughs> a billionaire, first of all, and you know he made a plea deal because he gave away all the, the information that he had, so... Like you said, Bo, I mean, he's got a year to wait. How much time is this guy really going to face? Yeah, I mean, most people that I've seen have to go through this uh, that actually done something. They get sentenced to, what, 10 years and maybe pull two and a half to five, if that. I mean, oh, come the fuck on. Not that I'm saying that's right or fair by any means, but anyway, jerk me off some more. Keep going. <laughs> Oh, shit. At the time of his suicide, quote, uh, you know, yeah, that's what we're going to call it, suicide, Epstein was facing up to 45 years in prison on charges of conspiracy and sex trafficking following his arrest on July 7th. So, yeah, there's more details, obviously, uh, coming out with that, because obviously Attorney Barr is looking into it. I very seriously doubt this will be a big headlining thing uh, over the next few weeks, though. I guarantee you it won't be. No, I'm, I'm sure it'll, it'll get... Uh, It'll swept under the rug. It'll be swept under nope. the rug. Yep. And our last story, something to brighten your day, comes from our, our very own Ben here in chat. 
bride ruined her $15,000 wedding dress while she gambled on a fart and lost. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is... <laughs> That's right. You heard it right. This isn't how you want your wedding day ruined. A wedding planner spilled the beans about a serious incident that happened at a recent wedding, and she exposed all the terrible details. She started off by saying the bride was being difficult most of the day, but before her first dance, she disappeared from the party. When the party, excuse me, when the wedding planner finally found the bride, she saw the massive problem at hand. The wedding planner said, quote, the bride had gambled on a fart and lost in a big way. The bride had been drinking health shakes to lose weight for her wedding and drank too much alcohol during her big day. It gets worse. (laughs) The smell was unrivaled. The body shaper the bride wore was latex that came down over the thighs and up to her bra. Waterproof, the poo had just sort of filled it. <laughs> oh my god! Mm. That's awesome. Mm. Everyone tried to, to help clean the bride. Full of the green juice. <laughs> oh. hey, have you ever smelled somebody that shit themselves after having a protein shake? I mean, it's <laughs> oh god, it's horrible. Throw alcohol with that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry, I, I've never been around Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> We had a guy that worked out. No, never mind. Anyway, everyone tried to help clean the bride, including the planner and her staff. But sadly, she still had a brown streak down the back of her $15,000 dress. The bride continued the party and started the first dance. And yes, the groom touched the back of the dress. (laughs) So there you go. First impressions for the new husband. You got yourself a shitty wife. Oh, my God. So... But that is it. That was all that was submitted for this week's Junk in the News segment. I'm sorry it was short and sweet, but uh, that's all we had. One serious, a couple funny, you know. <laughs> well, Trying to least, keep it light. <laughs> at least it didn't go into two hours over time. Um, Recoil, since you've not been here in a minute, uh, you want to tell us where people can go to get away from the hoopla that is the normal internet? If you would like to get away from the hoopla that is normal social media, you can head over to our forum at dbarracks.com more time that's dvbarracks.com once you get over there you can create yourself an account using either your email or your facebook login once you have an account created you can go to the top right hand corner of the screen and click on your profile you can change your profile picture to any picture you want to use and you can change your name to any call sign you want to use at that point you are now free to use the form in anonymity once you're there you can check out all the cool shit that you typically would expect from dv but also there's my personal favorite section which is the peer support section that's brothers and sisters like you and me looking out for. Brothers and sisters like you and me. So head on over to dvbarracks.com. One last time, that's dvbarracks.com. You heard it from Recoil here on Barracks All Guys, the DV forum at dvbarracks.com. Head over there now and sign up to get away from all the hoopla on social media. It's dvbarracks.com, the DV forum where you want to be. So um, now that we've done all of that, uh, go to Twitter at dv underscore dv radio where you can see us be stupid and bring up issues and me make fun of these retarded ass politicians uh, to the best of my very groggy ability early in the morning after I just woke up from, you know, like two hours of sleep. Um, <laughs> um, if he's lucky. <laughs> if I'm lucky. Smile.amazon.com. Make DV Farm your charity of choice. If you haven't already, and a portion of your shopping cart goes directly to the DV Farm. That is no cost or any hidden charges towards you. You buy your shit. And Amazon gives a little bit back to the uh, DV Farm. Again, at smile.amazon.com. Make DV Farm your charity of choice. Uh, head on over to euboracoffee.com. Buy your Battlegrounds coffee right now. A portion of that bag goes back to DV Radio. And if you want 15% off of the five-pound bag, head over to patreon.com forward slash DV Radio. You can also keep updates and uh, get a tour of my room here in the next couple of weeks, you'll get to see a before and after uh, what it looks like now as it sits before I move in and what it looks like uh, after I get the majority of things set up to my liking uh, so I can, you know, maneuver and navigate. And it will not be anywhere else, so if you want to see all that, head over to Patreon. Um, we have every tier ranging from a dollar to a couple hundred dollars. Uh, the couple hundred dollar ones are for uh, business owners and organizations and nonprofits that would like some advertisement but don't have a huge-ass budget. Uh, if you want to uh, sponsor us, please contact Oink at DV 
at oink at dbradio.net. Uh, give him a little bit of information about your business, nonprofit, small business, whatever, veteran-owned, emergency responders, uh, get first priority. But we do not turn anyone away at all. Um, we'll, we work on any budget. We literally work on any budget. We literally work on any <laughs> budget. I can't stress that enough. So hit him up at oink at, D, at, uh, oink at dbradio.net. Um, I don't think I'm forgetting anything else. Uh, Frosty. Any words of wisdom to end on tonight for our listeners? No, just keep, uh, I don't want to steal anybody else's, but uh, thanks for listening, and maybe we'll catch you next time. Mr. Recoil? As always, be safe. Keep looking out for each other, fuckers. And Mr. Oink? No, sir. Uh, just uh, one last thing. I want to drop it in chat one more time. Uh, the link to uh, taking care of our own helping out our sister Nevermore in her terrible times that she's gone through. So, uh, like I said, even, even a share is appreciated. And, uh, you know, thanks to everybody that has contributed. We really do. And honestly, uh, you know, want to say thank you. Well, for DB6, Google and Marty Davis, who never show up when we need them, Oink, Recoil, Frosty, this is Barrett Salk. You just heard it right here on DVRadio.net, WDVR, where you can listen to us live on Live 365 if you're in America, Canada, or the UK. And if not, you can catch us on podcast. I'm Bonerwood. Until next week, Potsicles. Bye-bye. Hit us up on Facebook and Twitter.